Welcome back to A's Tournament. This is our fourth series in the round of 16. This will be the final series in the left conference, and then we're going to move over to the right conference. In the left conference, the two teams that we have left are number two seed Michigan, going up against number seven seed Georgia. In the regular season, Michigan went 48 wins to 32 losses, and they are spearheaded by their S-rated right fielder, Baylor Grayweather. On the flip side, we have Georgia. Georgia finished the regular season at 40 wins to 40 losses, and they are spearheaded by their relief pitcher, Morgan Myers. These two teams both have very interesting stats. Georgia actually did not finish in the top half of any of the main categories that were tracked during the regular season. On the flip side, Michigan actually had the best average ERA from their pitching and only allowed the second most, or uh, second least, points allowed. So they are a team that is going to look to hold Georgia to low points, and based on Georgia's home run hitting and batting averages and points scored, uh, this is definitely possible that we're going to see some low-scoring matches here. That being said, despite Michigan's pitching dominance during the regular season, their overall pitching staff is pretty average. Uh, today, we will be watching Churn Ferguson, who in the regular season went 11 wins, 4 losses, and had a 2.65 ERA. And for Georgia, we'll be watching Pablo Campos, who is an A-plus rated pitcher. In the regular season, he went seven wins to five losses and had a 3.58 ERA. So with that, I'm looking forward to another series. I'm glad you guys are back, and let's go ahead and hop into the game. Here we go. This is going to start with Michigan at home field. One interesting thing is that uh, every team had a randomized home field for this tournament, and I think there are like 14 or 13 fields in the game, and I'm pretty sure that this is already the second or third time we've seen this field, so maybe it's a beneficial field, I'm not exactly sure, but I'll be starting things off here, three pitches from Churn Ferguson, and first strikeout. Churn Ferguson is an a minus starting pitcher, and uh, in the regular season had a very dominant performance, despite having to go up against a lot of S and A and A plus rated pitchers. Slow grounder. Second baseman Crane gets it over to Mayer, and that will be out too. This Georgia team, despite as a team and not performing, all that well, and that was actually a very close call there, and it was deemed safe. So Sammy Hammond will now be stepping up. Sammy Hammond is their designated hitter. In the regular season, he only had five home runs and batted below a 2 5 So we'll see what he can do. That ball just popped up, is drifting foul, and will likely go into the stands. And that's a strike three. So here we will be watching Trent Ferguson pitch a potentially great game. As I said, he is one of the best regular season starting pitchers. Pablo Campos starts things off. Pitch that goes foul. That ball gets popped up. Does not look like it has the distance. That will be fielded there. By Georgia. That ball just popped up. Will it fall? It will not. Hang on, I was able to get that there in center field. Baylor Gray Grayweather. Uh, he is Michigan's S rated player. So we'll see what he can do. In the regular season, he uh, was second in the league at home runs and third in RBIs, but he will start things out here by going out. 
So here for Georgia, Madeline Griffin uh, was actually one of their best batters, actually their best batter. She was actually second in the league with hits at 109. And she batted an average of a 3-2-3 in the regular season. So we'll see if she can get anything going here. Three balls, two strikes. And Madeline does get walked. Ace Worthers, in the regular season, batted a 2 6 9. And that is a bunt. And oh, that was a fielding error. The uh, Ferguson let that ball get slightly by him. And it actually works out for Georgia. Georgia now zero outs, a player on first and second. For Carter, I'm not exactly sure how you say this last name. Pacheco? Is that how I think you say it? Uh, let's see. That will probably result in a double play here. And it does. But that does get Madeline over there to third. And here we have Simone Peralta. Who is the first baseman? Batted over 300 in the regular season, but she will ground out in second. And what looked like a potentially devastating inning gets held to zero runs. Nelson Hood is their third baseman, fourth year in their batting order. Batted a 269 batting average in the regular season. And was third in the team that hits at 83. And he does get a hit here. That was a hard hit grounder past the second baseman and pitcher. Wax Moody? I was going to say his power bar is a little bit high enough because he has this power versus left handed pitcher positive trait. So he's just late on that one. So foul. It's a hit and it does go over the shortstop. So now Michigan with zero outs has a player on first and second. The mayor here is going to step up. The mayor or mother? I'm going to go with mayor. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. In the regular season, he batted a 2 5 2. And he was third in this team in home runs with 12. And he gets walked. And that is going to be big. I'll be honest, in this series, uh, Georgia is definitely the underdog. So, them sitting here, letting Michigan get bases loaded here. Is a potentially bad start to this series for them. Slow grounder. We'll see here. George is able to get the out at first, but one run does come over. So Michigan will take the one run lead, and they do have a player on third and second. Pretend Sample Moore is now in here in the eighth slot as their designated hitter, and she does strike out. Heidi Friendly, the center fielder, is now up. She's their ninth in the batting order. In the regular season, only hit a 2 3 7, which was the lowest on this team. And let's see, that ball gets popped. It's not going to have the distance, though. Griffin gets the catch out in left field, and what was once again looking like a potentially bad inning, Georgia keeps them at one run. Noah Hang now here. The ninth in their batting order. In the regular season batted a 2-1-5 average and only two home runs. So definitely one of the weaker batters that we have in this tournament. And he goes and gets struck out by Ferguson. Hannah Nicholson, their leadoff in the first spot there. 
She is their catcher. She batted a three two six in the regular season batting average, but one strikeout there. Samantha Munster. Just up here. One of the two players on this team that had double digit home runs. But again, they are not a home run hitting team, and she grounds out to end the inning. This Georgia team in the regular season only had two players that got double digit home runs. That was um, uh, Munster and Griffin, and their home runs were only 13 and 12. So definitely an area that Georgia will struggle in, and we'll see as Michigan is a little bit on the opposite end of that spectrum. They are definitely a team that has at least four players that are potential home run hitters. And here we go, that has popped up. Center fielder, hang out, and is dead to catch. Jackson Briggs, in the regular season, batted at 264, and he is one of their potential home run hitters. He had 11 in the regular season. Looking at these stats here, there's only really one player in this series that is a stealing threat. Actually, I lied, there are two. There's one on each team. On this team, right here, it's Baylor Gray that weather, who not only is a stealing threat, but obviously also a home run hitter and just a great player overall, and he cranks that one to put Michigan up by two to get us started here. Hits that one 416 feet. And again, Grayweather is their S-rated player, so a player that we will hear a lot in these next couple of games. Also, it gets a nice hit that will likely fall. It does fall, and it gets past the center fielder, which is going to allow for at least a double. It does look like Hangnail has a decent arm. Let's take a look at his arm. As we've seen these center fielders in these other games really impact um, a lot of uh, plays here. Hangnail does have a 69 fielding and a 77 arm. So uh, not the fastest player, only a 54 but he does have the arm to potentially hold some of these plays. And there we go, Michigan. Now the player on third and first. Oh, it's grounded. Well, two strikes, two outs. Just high. And there we go with a strike three. And I'll be honest with you, going into this fourth inning, Georgia is lucky that this is only a two-run game. Michigan has had a number of players on base and in scoring positions. So Georgia will have to only currently claw back from two-run deficit. Turn Ferguson through three innings. That is pitch 40. So his pitch count is very decent. That ball gets popped, but that's going to be caught. Grubs out there in the field for Michigan. Sammy Hammond, again, he is their designated hitter. And one reason that he's in that designated hitter spot is that he has that positive RBI man tree. But he catches it there. That's an easy second out. Adeline Griffin steps in here, and she knows that she's going to have to have a series for Georgia to stand a chance here. Rounder takes a weird bounce there, but they will go for out three. Michigan is going to be starting with batting order seven here in uh, Boone Crane. And Crane in the regular season batted a 2.69. He only hit six home runs. That's a slow grounder. Gets past Ferguson again. Or actually, wait, that's not Ferguson. That's uh, Campos. But that's the second time we've seen a slow grounder just make it past the pitcher in this series. 
pretend to sample more. Got a decent hit there, but it does drift foul. And she swings a lead on that one, and that is the second out. That is a line drive to Werther's and an out three to get us into the fifth inning. Just looking here, this uh, Michigan team, they have so many players that didn't even attempt the steal, which is rare to see. And let's see, that is looking like it might be out. No, Grubbs catches it right off the wall. So it is limited to a single. If that had been about one foot higher, that would have been a home run. Carter Pacheco here. Strikes out. Turn Ferguson so far in this game is proving his regular season dominance despite only being an A minus. And that is going to be a grounder. Grayweather is out there in right field. And Noah Hangdown here does have that negative RBI dud trait. And that is something worth noting here for Georgia. Two of their top five players do have a negative RBI dud trait. And that is something that will almost certainly play against them. And I guarantee you definitely impact it at least a handful of the regular season matchups. And he does take a strike out there. Hannah Nicholson steps in. So far is 0 for 2 today, but she does come in with a player on first and second. Good eye. Swings there on pitch three with a two ball one strike. Three balls, one strike. That ball gets popped and it's gonna likely fall. Friendly there did have to run in quite a ways in center field, but does get the catch. So we are getting to that point in the game where we are gonna have to look at relief pitching. Uh, actually, here we go. That's gonna be a one pitch out to start things off. So Probably looking at next inning before anything serious might happen here. Campos is, though, at 66 pitches with that one. And you can see his bars are starting to drop a little bit due to his stamina. So if Georgia pulls in a relief pitcher, it is... Oh, let's see. That's going to drop. Goes to the corner. Pacheco gets it in. And looks like he has a decent arm. But... Here we go, Michigan, Baylor Grayweather steps up. He's already had a home run in this game. And that ball is popped. It doesn't look like it has the distance. The hang is a little jelly out there. And they are tagging in, and we will get to third base. So Nelson Hood here. In the regular season, Nelson Hood did have 45 RBIs. Two strikes. And that is called a strike three. So that might be at the third inning in a row or fourth inning in a row where Michigan had somebody in scoring position and was held to only have a two run lead. So Churn Ferguson here, that's pitch 70 for him. He's currently considered locked in, so his stamina is not really affecting his bars yet. Strikes out for out one of the inning. Harry Nichols did have a hit already in this game. Starts out by taking a strike. Oh. 
Return Ferguson has that really high junk bar and not high velocity. So you see a lot of really interesting curve balls and stuff from him, and he gets the second strike out. Return Ferguson, we're in the sixth inning with two outs, already has eight strikeouts, and he's now considered on fire, which will certainly help him remain in this game and limit their relief pitchers getting low stamina early. Nice grounder, though. Georgia now has a player on first. And it's Madeline Griffin stepping up, who again is their top batter. Led this team in home runs with 13, which is not a lot. That's you know, probably not even top three on most teams. But for this Georgia team, this is who you want in a key situation like this, and they end up walking her. So now Ace Werthers steps up. Ace Werthers did bat a 269 in the regular season. He does have two singles here today. Two strikes here, and we are at two outs. And let's see, he gets under that one, but it does not have the distance, and Friendly will end the inning. So now we're back here with Campo stepping up. He is getting higher in pitch count, and the thing to keep in mind with Georgia is that their best rate at ooh, Nichols, beautiful dive, gets up quickly and gets the end. Uh, Georgia does have their best rate at player as a relief pitcher. Uh, that being said, they want to make sure to use her in the right games. Uh, this Georgia team also does have a B-rated closer in McDowell. Let's see, that ball gets hit. Should be caught there, and this caught a hang now to get out to. Slow rounder. Uh oh, it's a potential fielding error there, but it's still thrown out. So Georgia is now going into the top of the seventh. They're looking at a two run deficit. But they do have nine outs to at least get those two runs. This Michigan team does have limited uh, relief pitching talent. So they do have Santiago Precious, who is an A-plus player. But outside of him, they have uh, Ray, Longbottom, and Bates. And that is going to be a C-plus and then two C-minuses. So Michigan will have to limit when they bring in Santiago Precious, as he is really their only viable relief pitcher. I shouldn't say viable, it's just he is, without a doubt, uh, the relief pitcher that they are going to worry about the most. And I think Georgia here is going to bring in a pinch hitter. And here we go, actually, uh, Michigan is going to bring in Santiago Precious here with the, oh, let's see, that's a nice hit. Oh. Slight fielding error there. Ball gets hit, and that will be out three. So here we go. It would not surprise me here. Yep. Ooh, but there. Oh, wait, this is a new fielder. I was about to say, I thought they were pulling Campos for Morgan Myers. Considering it's only a two-run lead, we will likely see their S-rated player to try to keep this a two-run game. But we will see Friendly is stepping up. She is the worst batter on this team, so Georgia feels comfortable keeping Campos in there. It's hit over the first baseline foul. And strike three. Chandler Grubbs. 
the typical lead off there in the first slot. He's 0 for 3 today. In the regular season, he only batted with 2 4 1, which is low, especially for a first slot player. But here we go. Three balls, one strike. And he does get a hit there. So that will get him 1 for 4 on the day so far. Jackson Briggs is step, stepping up here, and this is going to be very big here for Georgia, because if Briggs is able to get on, I hope he's not. Okay, Werther's hits it over, and Georgia keeps us at a two-run game. Okay, Georgia's going to start things off here with Munster. Monster is one of the two players on his team with home run proven talent, but she pops that one and finally catches it there in center field. Harry Nichols again, their third baseman. And we batted a 2 3 8 in the regular season, only three home runs. But we are at a point in this game where this will matter a lot. Slow swing there. You can see Santiago Precious does have that team man trait in Michigan. Two outs. Oh, beautiful dive. It, it, oh, it was almost out. That Hammond must not have a speed bar at all. You see here. Yeah, Hammond was only a 35 speed. It's not to say most players you would have expected them to. Get in on that, but here we go. Griffin, will this be out? It's right at the wall. It doesn't go out, but it does take a friendly bounce, and friendly does not have a great arm, so that's going to be a triple for Griffin. And here we go. Ace Werther's now the player on third. Ooh, but that it looks like it's going to be caught. Yep, that does get caught. But Georgia now limits this to a one-run game. Kepler's is still pitching as of right now, but I'm going to assume that he's going to be swapped. I'm actually surprised that they're not swapping him for more than Myers. This is a one-run game start of this series. They want to try to limit this, and this is exactly why I make that comment. That's going to be a home run. And Michigan just got back their two-run lead. With a banger of 480 feet. And that's Grayweather's second home run. And there we go. They're now pulling campus, but they're actually going to bring in their relief pitcher in McDowell. Which actually, I didn't think about that. We are in the eighth inning. That is probably a good call. That ball goes into the corner, though. Looks like Griffin does have a decent arm there in left field. So Michigan gets a double, and there are still zero outs here. Wax Moody, two for three today. And a hard rounder. Nichols will get it over, and that will get Georgia out one. Mayer here, two for two today, but he was walked. Gets away from the catcher, but they do not risk it going to third. Was the good call. That ball did not get far enough away from the catcher. And they walk the batter. Crane now steps in, only one out, and he has a player on first and second. Swings late on that one. Grounder, that's going to likely result in a double play here. That's exactly what happens. Wow, I mean, look at this. Through this game so far, we have 17 hits, but only four runs scored. So here we go. Georgia, top of the ninth. They're going to need at least two scores. The 
is that two man tree and strike or out one strike out to start things off here in the top of the ninth. So then for Walker. Two for three today. She does have two singles. That is a slow grounder. Precious gets over. And oh my goodness, that arm. That ball was thrown so hard. And here we go. Two outs. Precious is going to end this game. One for Michigan. Slow grounder. Saw horse at second. Gets it over. And Michigan is going to walk in with game one. And that was a very high hitting game, but a very limited scoring game, which is kind of what you would expect in this matchup, to be perfectly honest. Uh, here we go. We ended with 17 hits between the two teams, only four runs scored. In terms of player of the game, I think Grayweather is an obvious standout for either first or second, as he did have two home runs and batted uh, two for four on his four attempts. The other option here would be Ferguson, although uh, even though Ferguson pitched an outstanding game, he only pitched 6.1 innings. So I have a feeling game MVP is going to go to Grayweather. But uh, it's probably Grayweather and Ferguson as the two that we're going to see at the top here. And there we go. So it is Grayweather and Ferguson. And then Madeline Griffin does show up on the top three. Uh, she was the one RBI hitter, and she did get that triple. And again, she is the main hitter for Georgia. So a name that we will likely see on this top three list throughout this series. So with that, thank you for joining me for game one of Michigan v. Georgia. And I'll be seeing y'all for game two.